Thank you. Uh, thanks for the organizers for this awesome event and thanks for the invitation. So I will talk about uh, citation graph visualization uh, and how this can or I think or we think this could be solved using Wikidata. So what I think the problem is or the challenge is currently References in papers, books, posters are lists of disconnected things. They're just there and they're usually sorted either by an index number or alphabetically. Um, the, uh, the impact of each of the references is unclear just by looking on the list. Um, the reference list is just a bunch of uh, text. It's not a real visualization. So, uh, and it also makes it really difficult to um, to uh, explore the literature, especially if you um, if you just have links which go out to to PubMed or something like that, and not much more. Um, and the whole thing is text, and it's not really uh, connected to the semantic web. So, yeah. Uh, so the solution of, for the problem should be or could be Wikidata slash Wikisite. Uh, Wikisite is a media wiki project. Uh, you can find it under this URL, Meta, MediaWiki.org. Uh, it's based on Wikidata, and each of the publications uh, which is in there, which are in there, are uh, Wikidata items. Uh, technically, they are just JSON documents, um, and this allows you to uh, represent referencing graphs in Wikidata. So I have now been talking about Wikidata. Just let me quickly walk you through what Wikidata actually is or means. So you know Wikipedia, which is on the uh, the page on the on the right side. It's a little blurry, but I, I think you can see that it's uh, basically free text, a little bit structured, with an info box with a little structured data. And you have on the left side the same concept about a chemical compound and antibody uh, with structured data, which has labels, uh, certain IDs, certain categorizations like chemical compound, pharmaceutical drug, bio biopharmaceutical, and IDs like the Campbell ID. And this is basically just a web rendering of the JSON document, which is in the back of that compound. And this is the same principle for all Wikidata items. And they look just uh, a schema of that looks like that. So you start out with a label. In that case, it's just a generic thing. It's London. Then this has uh, is a property. It's called population with a value of 8 million. So you have this property value pairs. Then you have, can have qualifiers which just modify this property value pairs. And the combination of that is called a claim. You claim something about reality or something else, and uh, you claim that. And in order to uh, make the claim more solid, you can add references. And the whole thing of a claim and a reference with a supporting reference is called a statement. And this is how Wikidata works. You have a label, descriptions, and you have these collections of uh, property value pair claims. Uh, with the reference, then it's a statement. So this is just a raw overview of Wikidata. So just to give you a few uh, additional things about it, so this is essentially a completely free uh, resource. It's CC zero. This means everybody can use it even for commercial use. Then it's granular. You have single values which can be referenced or should be referenced. Anybody can contribute uh, who has a Wiki Wikipedia account. Um, there is an extensive item history which allows you to keep track of what's going on on each item and it's also allowing you to identify and track vandalism in very rare cases it's actually occurring. Um, it's a data repository for handling all domains of data. It's not just for life sciences, it's for basically anything. Social sciences, libraries, basically any data can be rep represented. Um, it has a full integration with the semantic web, so that's really nice. There is a, a module which does serialization to RDF. It has its own all, all representation. And there is a really large effort now to represent the knowledge in a Spark endpoint, 
which makes discovery and, uh, and querying of the knowledge really convenient. And yeah, essentially it's a gigantic knowledge graph, of graph knowledge. So, um, how is this data used, which is in Wikidata? It's essentially used by other Wikipedias and the Wikimedia Commons. These are all projects by the Wiki, uh, Wikimedia Foundation, and this is uh, kind of, yeah, it's useful because this has evolved to be the central infrastructural uh, entity of the whole Wikimedia universe. But it's not only that, with the Spark endpoint and the Wikidata API, uh, you can use that to make your own apps. Just uh, write Sparkle queries or tap the API and you can, you can make use of that. Um, so now I gave you a general overview of what Wikidata is, just quickly about the biographic data in Wiki, Wikidata. So currently there is like almost 6 million papers from PubMed in there, so out of the 27 million which are currently have been published. About 100,000 books are there too, um, but you can represent any kind of item which can be referenced. Um, this can be posters, conference abstracts, slideshows from Fixture. Uh, it does not need to have its own unique ID because as soon as you create a wiki data item, it automatically gets its unique ID because every new item in Wikidata just gets a new ID. But certainly, in order to make it interoperable with other systems, it's highly advisable to have its unique ID like a DOI. So this is really useful. For example, Figshare gives you that as soon as you upload something. Um, and one thing which can also be done in Wikidata is author disambiguation. Uh, if possible, authors should exist as unique items in Wikidata. That's currently certainly not possible because uh, many, many outer informations in PubMed are just strings, so it's really hard to uh, really for common names to see who actually was that person. But if a person has an ORCID ID, that's kind of easy. Um, it can also, this is a big incentive right now in the Wikidata community, be done as a community project to do the auto disambiguation and also especially get librarians on board who uh, dig into that and really go into the histories of their institutions and see who authored what papers in the past. So just with that like small, small side project, this can be already very interesting uh, and can really top what PubMed can do for us right now. Anyway, so the current importing strategy is to try to get the more recent stuff into Wiki data. So as you can see in the past, there is not there have been less papers published anyway, but uh, in recent years, so everything which is like in the past 15 years, there has been a lot of stuff being imported, a lot of uh, PubMed papers. But um, it's a slower process because you just need to, uh, you cannot overwhelm the infrastructure. So yeah, but for the, for the recent years, the representation is pretty good. So now quickly about how, uh, how a uh, paper looks in Wikidata, so what, what's the representation? So you start out, as I showed before, with the, the title as the label, that's just a cancer genomics paper. You have that in different languages, uh, certainly literature is English, so it's yeah. instance of scientific article, then you have the title again to make sure that this is represented correctly, and then you have two types of authors. You have authors which exist as Wikidata items, so they ha you have more information on those authors in, the, in Wikidata, so there might be uh, information on what institution they belong to, on what, uh, what their education was, and so on. And then they have, you only have information about authors which just exist as strings. So this is, as soon as there is more information on one author here, so it, it, this person is getting Created as a Wikidata item, this is just can be deleted here and added to that list. Um, because this allows you then to um, do Sparkle queries just on authors and get back their whole um, their whole um, publication history if it's uh, imported as a complete set into Wikidata. Um, 
then what, what's really interesting, what's really important for a citation reference graphs is to this property sites. So this, uh, these are just links to other Wikidata paper items. So that's just uh, circus plot. Um, and this is just a few of the whole like 70 references in this paper. This is really important because then you can really do nice Sparkle queries on those, on those papers. Um, then you get a bunch of uh, just standard uh, information about uh, the publication. So that's published in science, volume, pages. So that's just standard structured information. It's still already way much better than what you usually get from a reference on a paper because it's more than just text. Um, and then you have a bunch of identifiers, like a public ID, public uh, uh, CID, DOI, and then you can have as many relevant identifiers as you like. So that's just the structured identifiers, and you click on that, and you get directly to PubMed or other resources. Um, so why do we? Uh, why has this Wikisite project been started, and why is public, uh, bibliographic information, Wikidata, even required or useful? So, so. Wikipedia, the Wikipedias are full of references. So in order to make the structured, machine readable, and so on, it's good to have those represented in Wikidata, and then you can pull into the Wikipedia articles, you can pull the structured, uh, the structured data directly from Wiki, Wikidata, so you don't need to invent or re-add that every time, so you just know something about the about the references, like say the title or the PubMed ID, just uh, directly pull that from from Wiki Wikidata. Then it's also very useful to reference uh, to reference uh, data in Wikidata itself, because Wikidata has uh, this really nice ability to reference each statement. So you can reference each statement. And for example, if you have an annotation, like a genotology annotation, uh, where this annotation come, came from is usually some scientific paper. So and you can just then say, OK, the statement of this protein has a certain function came from paper X. And this can be really nice to represent it there too. And you can then query based on, for example, you have one paper, give me all genotology annotations, which came from that paper. That's just one example. Um, and certainly, one incentive to do that is also to create something which is fully open, independent, RDF compatible, uh, compatible as a referencing graph, because this doesn't really exist. Um, PubMed Europe does a, quite a good job, but um, yeah, PubMed itself could do a little better regarding RDF representation. So. What I imagine and what I had in mind for this biohackathon is just to do a completely different um, representation of referencing. So what I had in mind is just to do a referencing graph, a timeline, where all papers are listed according to the published year or maybe split up a little more into a month. And then what's important is to represent the, the number of citations a paper has as the size of a certain ellipse or something else. Um, so you can scroll through the timeline, um, get uh, get information what the really, really highly cited papers are in your graph, and just get a nice view and an idea of what's going on in the list of references you have for a certain paper. And also what, what I think is really useful, if you just click on that and you are able to explore through the referencing graph, you get then immediately to the references of that paper too, because this is nowadays kind of annoying if you try to do that just on a website of a, um, of a journal. Um, anyway, and this red and green circles just mean that you can annotate the papers in Wikidata with other concepts. Let's say paper H talks about mostly a certain chemical compound. Then you can attach the chemical compound directly to the paper and say, uh, it, it's this paper is talking about that. And you have all the chemical compound information then in Wikidata too. You have all the links to resources like PubChem, uh, to, uh, you have the chemical structure and other things which are highly relevant. So it makes you, it allows you to easily access 
the data, explore what's in there, and go to the necessary databases very, very quickly. So, okay, we'll speed up a little. So the technology I plan to use is basically uh, a Angular 2 app uh, with um, based this node using the Sparkle endpoint, uh, written in TypeScript, secured with Let's Encrypt, Flask as a small endpoint or uh, as required in Cytoscape for the graph to visualize that. Um, yeah, and that's just a standard, uh, standard backend with a few nodes technologies here. Uh, but yeah, it's not so important. I did a similar thing already with uh, drug and drug repurposing as a demo. So uh, this can be done and it uh, can be visual visualized quite nicely. Um, so to sum up, there is a rich growing corpus of bi uh, bibliography in data in Wikidata. Uh, the data is fully open, can be used for any downstream application as uh, required and liked. Um, then um, the plan for the hackathon is to create an Angular 2 app um, to visualize that and as an open source project so it can be, be used as a plugin for any website and for anybody who likes to use it. And in general, uh, Wikidata now has a lot of data and actually what we would like to see is more people base, basing their apps, uh, programming, um, JavaScript apps, other apps, you can use any web uh, API compatible language for that. So, okay, to acknowledge a few people, my group, Andrew, Sue, Greg, Ben, ben Tim, um, and to the side people on the right side. Thank you.